done. Boy, he's done great things, ain't he? Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter number 25. I know I'm veering off just a little bit tonight, but um, I told preacher, he said, preacher told me this morning, he said, you got liberty? Preach with Revelation 14 if you want, or if you want to go off. I said, I never like to preach stuff you preach on so they don't find out what I did wrong later on. And so some of you got that and some of you didn't, you know, so he'll preach it next week and say, Will was all wrong about that. I never liked that. So I, uh, I'll stick to, uh, tried to change this a couple times today. Uh, Lord, uh, just there's so much in this. I don't know if I did noon service justice or not, man. I just basically read through what I got, but um, Matthew 25, we'll preach anyway. So Matthew 25, verse number one, the Bible says, and then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And, all the, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Let me pray with you. I'm going to preach at you. Father, thank you so much uh, for your goodness to us. And as we, uh, Lord, dig into your word, it's preaching time. And so I pray you'd uh, rightly divide your word tonight. I know the Holy Spirit has to do work in everybody's heart that Soil would be uh, fertile, be one that would receive the word. God, I pray you help me. I, you know my faults and my failures, my weaknesses. And God, I need you. You use me tonight. Give me unction power from on high. Preach your word. I pray that your people be edified. It's for your church, Lord, and that uh, we can leave here different than what we came. God, thank you so much for that holy Bible. Thank you for the, the pages of it. Thank you for it. The, it's alive, and it'll teach us something. It'll do something in our hearts. We just let it. So I pray we'd. Have liberty tonight. Thank you again for the people who are gathered. You blessed tonight. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all of God's people said. Amen. Amen. You be seated. Thank you. Mm. Fire has many purposes. Fire has many purposes. <clears throat> if we look at fire, if you just take fire and uh, a bunch of it or a little of it, there's some things that fire does. Fire. Uh, cleanses and purifies. The Bible says in uh, Psalm 12, verse 6, says, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Talking about the Word of God. But it purifies. They used to me they melt some things down, melt some metal down, melt some gold or silver. They would take that dross off the top of it, and it would be a pure vessel. It purifies. Um, fire also shines. A dark room and you light something go over to uh, if you got uh, Matthew go over to chapter 5 real quick let me show you some of this <clears throat> it also shines so it purifies fire and you say what's that have to do with anything I'll get to in a second just hang on to it we'll get back to our text <clears throat> it, it, it purifies but uh, fire also shines it shines look at uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse number 15 it says neither do men light a what's it say right there candle now, what do y'all light a candle with? Fire, right? Uh, they don't have those. Uh, well, I'm going to keep going. And put it, watch it says, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and giveth, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And it says, let your light so shine. So here's what the Bible says. It says that no one's going to light a candle with fire. It shines. And then he says, let your light shine before everybody else. So what that tells me is God expects a little fire to be in us. That's right. It ain't no spotlight. They ain't got those yet, right? <clears throat> they ain't got them. And so he said there is a, a fire that ought to shine out of you that will uh, shine to the world. So it shines. That's what a fire does. Back in our text, if you flip back there, uh, one thing that just caught me about this parable, and we never read it all because it's the parable is not what I'm preaching on, but what, what I get out of this parable, what I see in this parable is some the people that they've got these, uh, these virgins, they've got these lamps. And in these lamps, some old-time lamps, uh, they used to light them, and they would have a wick. And what would they have in the bottom of those things? Oil. 
And you would light those things, and if, when, when, when that thing's on fire, when it has fire on it, what's burning? The oil. You say, well, no, the wick's burning. No, if you lit it without the oil, the wick would burn up pretty quick and go out. And so there's fire lit, and in that, there's some oil that's burning. Now, the, the wicks are trimmed, but in this verse number 8, look at verse number 8. He says, he should, said this, the foolish said to the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. They still got wick, but they don't have oil in it. And, and I don't know if you know this or not, but in, in Scripture, and I'll probably get to this later, I'm, I'm, um, the Scripture oil is a, is a picture of the Holy Spirit. And so this fire that's, uh, that's talked about or that's, uh, I guess it's, it's not really, it doesn't say fire in there, but we assume it's fire because he said, my lamps have gone out. The virgin's lamps have gone out. The other had oil in it, and they lit it, and their fire was burning because fire it shines. Fire purifies. Fire shines. How about this one? Fire consumes. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. I know <clears throat> fire sure does consume. When our house burnt down, there wasn't nothing left but bricks. And they say it was 1,400 degrees and just an ash heap. There wasn't anything left of it. It consumes. You get that thing hot enough, it's going to burn up everything. Fire's going to burn up everything. And it says, in Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 29 said, Our God is that consuming fire. That means that when God, when he gets a hold of you and, and you get a hold of him, he consumes everything. Everything is burned up in, uh, before him. That's who God is. Because if you get a hold of God, he will burn up everything. You say, oh, I want some stuff. Oh, he'll give you stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But he wants, a, a, he wants, to be, he wants you to be consumed with him, and he's a consuming fire. 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse 10 says that there will be a heat so hot, there will be a fire so hot that comes up on this earth one day that the elements will heat, will, will burn up, will melt, rocks will melt. It's hot. Fire is consuming. Fire is cleansing. Fire is shines. <clears throat> Fire lights. You said you already said that. I didn't already say that. Luke chapter 12. You're in Matthew. Go to Luke chapter 12 real quick. Luke chapter 12. Fire lights. <clears throat> this one's good. Luke chapter 12 and verse number 35. Watch this. Luke chapter 12, verse 35 says... <laughs> I love this verse. He says, let, let your loins be girded about. Now, what he's saying right there, if you don't know, he's saying be ready. Let your loins be girded about. They, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but they said, if, you, if it ever says, you read in your Bible and it says that he girded up his loins, that means that they tied up the little things they used to wear so they could run faster. And he's saying right here, Jesus is saying, let your loins be girt, be ready. Be ready for what? And then he says this. And your lights, what? <laughs> I love this. You ready? He just didn't say something. He said, there's a light there, and then there's a burning there. Y'all see that? He said, let your lights, by the way, this ain't a, again, this isn't a flashlight. This isn't a, this isn't a bulb, because the only thing they had back then was fire. And so this is what he's saying. He's saying, you have a fire in you, and that's your light, but you need to let that light burn. You need to let it burn so hot that it'll light something else because fire, if it touches something else, will light that thing on fire too. Right? And so you have fire. It's got this cleansing. You've got a fire that it shines. It brings forth light. You've got a fire. It will consume things. And fire will light other fire. Fire will light other things on fire. We do it, candlelight service. And then we, here you go. You get a little puny fire, the wick of the other candle will put that puny fire out. But you get a blowtorch out, that works. I stopped using matches lighting fires at my, my wood stove at home. I started getting blowtorches. That worked much better. Much better. Why? Because a big, a big fire will light something else. Everybody getting this? Now watch this. <clears throat> I believe God wants us to be on fire for him. I just believe it. I think that's what... He sets us, and that's why Jesus said, let your light so shine. That's why he said, let your lights burn. Be on fire. Now watch, I'm not talking about the, the excitement. It comes in different ways. Zeal and excitement comes in different ways. 
don't have to run up and down the aisle and get, I mean, it gets exciting around here sometimes. But I, in my mind, I think if I can see someone doing it at a football game, boy, I sure ought to do it in the house of God. If I get excited about uh, things that I watch on TV and I'll, man, I can't believe that. And if, and if I can see someone at a baseball game or a football game or basketball game or you go to these high school games and all these things are happening and they're so on fire for those things, man, I think God ought to expect a little bit of fire out of us. He says, let your lights burn. Let your light shine. And again, it shows up in many different ways. I don't think if you're zealous for God, you necessarily got to have this excitement that you're, you're all over the place. You're, Woo, that's awesome. I mean, you could have a zeal for God and sit there perfectly quiet. My wife has a zeal for God, and you, sometimes you don't even know she's in here. We offset each other well. <laughs> quiet, obnoxious, okay? So, I mean, it's, we offset each other. But there's a zeal. There's a fire that we all ought to have. A fire keeps us burning. A fire that keeps us burning. Oil keeps it burning. Like we said, it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to understand this, that when we're talking about fire tonight, I'm talking not necessarily something we can do. That's why heaven's fire is, uh, it's not a fire that we can uh, necessarily light. It's a, a fire that needs to be lit, but keeps burning because we've got the Holy Spirit feeding that thing. You can be as, uh, uh, try to do as much of this stuff in the flesh as you want, but if you ain't got the backing of the Holy Spirit, if you ain't got oil in your lamp, your fire go will go out very quickly. And so watch this. Though it's our job to keep the whip, wick trimmed, you're to take the wick and you're to trim it up. I don't have much. We used to light these little lamps when I was at, uh, at the farm and the power would go out a lot. We'd have these little lamps, we'd light them up. But the, you, have to, you have to trim the wicks. If you don't trim the wicks... Uh, it ain't going to burn as efficient. It's not going to burn as bright. And so you've got you to cut off some of those things, that the, 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 the burnt parts of the wick, and, the, the, and you, you keep doing that, and the fire stays clean. And so watch this. Watch this now. It's our job to keep ourselves clean, that the fire burns bright and hot and, and lights up around us. It's our job to keep that. But we got to get the Holy Spirit to be a part of keeping us burning for him. It's our job to get that rick, but I want you to know this. <coughs> our fire's never supposed to be put out. Jesus wants us to have zeal for him. He don't want us to be bored in church. Oh, come on now. He don't want us, he don't want us to be bored. He, want us to, to, he don't want us to, uh, to lose our zeal for the word of God. He doesn't want to lose our zeal for prayer. Because in Revelation chapter 3, verse 19, he's talking to the church of Laodicea, and he says this. You ready? Revelation 3, 19, he says this. He says two things. Have zeal, uh, be zealous, and repent. That's what he says. When they've lost their fire, when they don't have anything for Jesus, he tells them in the book of Revelation, y'all hearing this? I'm just making sure y'all still awake. This side is. Y'all got it? And so he says in Revelation, this church that's backslidden, this church, he says, we have need of nothing. Jesus is on the outside knocking on the door to get in. He says, I want you to do two things. I want you to repent, and I want you to get a fire back in your bones for me. Have some zeal. Well, you can be zealous for a lot of things. <clears throat> I get excited about a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you this. I want to be excited about Jesus. I want to be excited about his word. I've come into church services, happens to me, and I'm like, oh, please hurry up so I can get out of here. And then I got to be at the altar because I'm repenting because I'm like, what's wrong with me? I don't say that about a ball game. I don't say that about a movie I want to watch. But boy, sometimes we, y'all hearing this tonight? He wants us to have zeal. Now watch this. This came, I was preaching, I'm preaching a series down, downstairs <clears throat> and preaching robed in royalty. And we're going through the book of Kings. And what I noticed was, I'm popping on this thing. What I noticed was this, that Solomon, I talk about people calling down fire from heaven. Now, the famous one's Elijah, we'll look at in a second. But Solomon called down fire from heaven. I, I'm, I'm reading it, and I don't know if I just read over this or didn't think that, but he, 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 he cried out to God, and he called down fire, heaven's fire, and it came down. Solomon did that. And it was amazing to me. So it got me thinking. And I know I'm going to spiritualize this a little bit, but heaven's fire, when, when, when it comes down, what does it cause? What happens when heaven's fire is, is burning in us? And there's not very many times that, that, God, that the fire from heaven comes down, 
But I think when it comes down, there's some things that will happen. We're going to look at six things, and then we'll preach a message to you. I'm just, no, I'm not joking. I'm really going to do that, but I'm going to do it quickly, I promise, okay? <coughs> so I want you to do this. We're going to look at just these six instances. I don't think this is all of them, but it, when, 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 when heaven's fire comes down, when we have a Z, when we get on fire, some of these things are going to come out, or it's going to show these things to the world around us, or to our friends, or to our peers, or to our coworkers, whatever. Go, go to, I want you to go to all these. We'll go very quickly through them. Go to 1 Kings. We're going to go in a semi-order. 1 Kings in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18, maybe I need to lower this thing, I hear myself popping in this thing, test, that might work, 1 Kings chapter 18, yeah, I'm still doing a little bit, and verse number 37, it's just going to have to be the way it is, all right, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 37, <clears throat> What causes heaven fire to come down? What, why, what will happen when it comes down? What will happen when we, get, when we get on fire? I'm trying to motivate you a little bit. Number one, I'm going to show you that it proves God's sovereignty. Look at chapter number 18, verse 37. You don't know the story. This is um, Elijah, and he calls Ahab, and he says, I want to, we're going to do a little contest, and it's a great story. You read through it. It's awesome. And he says, Ahab, I want you to get the prophets of Baal, and I want you to bring them here, and we're going to put an alt, we're going we're gonna to stack an altar, and we're going we're gonna to kill two bullocks, and you're going to take one bullock, and I'm going to take one bullock, and we're going to call on our God, and whichever God answers by fire, he's the true God. So the prophets of Baal, they're up cutting themselves, and they're doing all these other things, and uh, nothing ever happens. Silent. And then he gets up in verse 37. He starts praying in verse 36, but in verse 37, watch what he says. Hear me, O Lord. He's got the bullock. He's got the altar all prepared. He says, hear me, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the, there it is, watch it. The fire of the what? The Lord fell. You see, the fire came down to prove God's sovereignty. When there's other gods, when there's other entities, when there's other prophets preaching against the God of heaven, it says, no, we're the real God. God says, I'll send a fire and may light you on fire to show his, uh, prove his sovereignty. Say, I am the one true God. They fell on their faces before him and they said, you are the true God. Why it took that contest, I don't know, but they had other gods in mind. They had other gods they thought they had power and might and Elijah said, I want to show you that the heaven's fire falling down will prove that he is a sovereign God above all gods on this earth. I don't know what's going to happen to this country. I don't know. Uh, this um, uh, noon service, uh, we we're talking about uh, sh uh, fuel shortages and, and all these shortages and all this stuff. I was talking to my brother today. He's like, man, is things going to change around? I said, I don't know if things are going to change around, but I know the God that can change them around. I know the God that's got control of all this stuff, and I know that it's, it's fearful if we watch all that stuff. I just tell people, turn on Andy Griffith, you'll be fine. <clears throat> turn off the news, turn him on, it's fine. It's all, it, because I know the God, and I understand that we can look at things and think, well, how am I going to get this? And my mind goes, how am I going to provide for this? And how am I going to provide for this? But if the God of heaven, the sovereign God of heaven, man, if you just catch a zeal, if you'll just keep a fire, if he will feed Elijah through a famine for three years with a raven and some bread, he can feed you and me through anything. He's sovereign above all things. And I, that verse that just sticks in my mind always and forever is, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. My heart is what causes me to lean into my own understanding because I think somehow I can do better than God at this thing. But he's a sovereign God. He's a holy God. He's a just God. And the fire from heaven will come down to prove that he is a sovereign God. Number two, go to 2 Kings chapter 1. <clears throat> 2 Kings chapter 1. Just flip over a couple pages. 2 Kings chapter 1. So number one, the proof of God's sovereignty. Number two, the protection from the world system. Protection from the world system. 2 Kings chapter 1, watch the fire, it comes down. The same guy, Elijah. Verse number 10, if you don't know the story, back just really quickly. Ahaziah, uh, 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 there's a king. You can read his name later. And anyway, he's a not a good, very good king. He was sick, and he sent his, uh, 
his uh, men said, go, go uh, inquire of uh, this false god. And while this man is going to infi- inquire of this false god, you can read later, Elijah comes to him and says, where are you going? He said, I'm going to inquire this false god for my king. And he said, you go back and tell your king, why would he search after another god when there's the god of heaven he should be searching after? Tell him he's going to die. So the guy goes back, tells the king, hey, you're going to die. <laughs> what a messenger, you know? So the king gets mad, and he's sending, these, he's sending troops to go get Elijah. And this is where we're picking up verse number 9. The king sent, look at king, verse 9. The king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50 and went up to him. And behold, he sat at the top of the hill. Elijah sitting on top of this hill. And he spake unto him, thou man of God, the king said, come down. It's an order. And Elijah answered and said to the captain, if I be a man of God, then let fire, there it is, come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Again, also he sent him another captain. So that wasn't enough. I'm going to send him more more old boys and they're going to get you this time. And he answered and said to him, O man of God, thus thus hath the king said, come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said to him, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. Uh, um, I lost it there. If, uh, uh, come down quickly, Elijah said, fire come down from heaven, there it is, and consume thee and thy 50, and the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed thee and his 50. What was he doing? There was protection. There was, a, um, there was protection from the world system. The world wanted to get Elijah, and the fire of God come down. Because watch, when we have the fire from heaven, from heaven come down and light us up again and burn within us, the people that want to get us won't want to be around us. I want them to have fire. The world system is a wicked, awful place. Bruce was saying that about that, but um, man, there's a video that um, the Living Waters Ministries and another pastor I know sent out, and it's a it's an awful video uh, to behold because it taught it, it shows where this doctor was called in. They, they animated it; it wasn't real, but they animated it, and he was called in for a ultrasound, and he. And the doctor that was in charge said, get in this ultrasound. I don't want to tear a, the, the uterus or something like that. And he got that ultrasound. He realized it was a baby. And he said, I could tell it was a girl. And so he said he watched. And I'm, I try not to be too more. I just want to show you the world system. Um, he watched him tear that baby limb for limb. And watched the baby curl up after they tore one of them off in pain. And the doctor continued to do it until it was complete. The doctor quit. He said, I'll never do that again. And in the video, he says, I'm sorry, little girl. I can't believe I did that. You say, well, that's awful. We all believe it's awful. But do you know that there's some people that are going to be voting next Tuesday that believe that that's okay? And there'll be people that won't vote biblical values and will vote in people that will give people the right to rip them from limb to limb in the womb. That shouldn't be controversial. They're precious little lives. And I'm going to tell you, go vote for one. If God's people would vote biblical values, we'd run the country. Y'all realize that? We would run the, we would put the people in office that would stop this horrific and horrible thing. Yeah, I know that we've got, I know that we've got the, 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 um, the Supreme Court, we got that overturned. We got that, that, that stuff we've been praying for. We've seen it. It's awesome. But now it's up to, up to us to put the people in place, get rid of it. What about this? And what about, I don't know. But I know God, when he sees those precious little babies in there, man, it's horrible. So go, go, go find out. Number one, don't vote for your wallet first. Vote biblical. But find out where they stand on abortion. And if they'll, they'll let a little baby be ripped out of a womb, Kick them to the curb where they belong. They don't belong in our, in our state house. You say, well, you're, you're in a pulpit. You better believe I'm in a pulpit. You better believe I'm saying this. I'm going to cast my vote, but I'm going to tell you what, there ain't a single check mark on by a single name of a person that will even waver on that stuff. And neither should it in your heart and life either. I'll say, come on now. That's good. But this world system, isn't it horrible? It's wicked. It's awful, man. We're surrounded by it. But I'm telling you, when we get a fire, when we get a zeal, when it comes down, when it burns bright and hot enough, the people that surround us will only be the people that burn bright and hot for him too. 
The world system will be protected from it. Number three, go to First Chronicles chapter number 21. First Chronicles chapter number 21. That was just a layover from noon. I didn't mean to say that. It wasn't in my notes, but I just was thinking about that. <clears throat> First Chronicles chapter number 21. Watch this, verse 26. Not only will it protect us from the world system, not only will the fire of God protect us from the world system, and it will, I forgot that first one, it will pr- it prove God's sovereignty with Elijah. But First Chronicles 21, 26, it'll purify man's sin. It'll purify man's sin. First Chronicles 21, 26, watch this. This is David. You wonder where Solomon got the idea of how to pray down fire from heaven? His, his dad taught him. Verse 26 says, David built an altar there unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord, and he answered from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offerings. You see, what happened here is David, he got a hold of some sin. He started numbering the people, and God sent some judgment in his life, and David said, I got to get this sin. Now, David, man, he was awesome at repenting. You can see that all through his life. But, man, when fire of the, from the, when the fire of heaven comes down in your life and lights us on fire, man, it'll, it'll purify the sin in our life, won't it? You can't have a burning fire in you for Jesus Christ and have sin right beside us. He's a consuming fire. Y'all remember that one? He's a consuming fire, and he'll consume that. And when you get on fire, there will be no sin that can stand in the place of that fire. The sign we have purged away our sin is a fire from heaven in our bones. Man, one of the things that, <clears throat> ah, I can't go there. Proverbs 25, verse 4 says this. Take away the dross. We talked about it earlier. Watch. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. That's what Proverbs 25, 4 says. He said, take off that stuff. That fire is heating up, and it's coming up, and it's bringing up in your life, and scrape it off and be a vessel of finer for the Lord Jesus Christ. When there's a fire in your bones. For Jesus, man, you'll purge us from sin. Y'all getting this? The fire from heaven that, that, that fell down. Go to 2 Chronicles 7. Here's his, here's, his, here's his son, Solomon. 2 Chronicles 7. I'll get to the message here in just a second. <laughs> I'm glad Dwight found that funny. <clears throat> I'm not the only one in here, all right? But it's, it's simple. Don't worry. It's simple. 2 Chronicles 7, verse number 1. Oh, I love this one. 2 Chronicles 7, 1, it says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Number four, the presence of God will be in the sanctuary. (laughs) When we get a little fire, come on now, when we get a little fire, when we start saying, God, send the fire from heaven, the presence of God will be in the sanctuary, in the house of God. Boy, ain't that your prayer? Isn't that our prayer? When we come in the house of God, we ain't coming to see a person. We ain't coming to see people, although that's always nice. We're not necessarily coming to hear to sing. But, man, we come because we want the presence of the Holy One of Israel to come in this place. The Holy God of Heaven would say, yes, I will come down to meet with Bible Baptist Church. Man, what a, what a, man, what a thought. But this is what he did. He was dedicating the temple. And he prayed, God, would you do this? And God sent fire from heaven, and his presence was there. If you read on, it says that the smoke filled the temple, that they couldn't even minister in that place. It was so thick. Wouldn't it be nice just to have a a time where you come into the house of God? We had one uh, at camp one time that they were singing some songs, and people started repenting of their sin before the preacher ever started preaching. And two hours of an altar call, teenagers just coming down and begging God to forgive them and coming down and getting a fire back for Jesus Christ and coming down and rededicating their life and coming down and saying, God, I need you to do this. And for two hours, the presence of Almighty God filled the room. The preacher couldn't get up and preach. And after two hours, stood up and said, well, I think he did all he could do today. Let's close in prayer. When fire from heaven will come down, when we get a fire, when we say, uh, no more, I'm gonna, I want to fire. God would just send fire from heaven. That the presence of God in the sanctuary. Number five, go to the book of Revelation. They're kind of in, in order, but not really. Go to Revelation chapter 20. I had to go there at least once since you guys are running through the Revelation up here. Revelation chapter number 20. Not only the presence of God in his sanctuary, the purified of man's sins, or uh, the proof of God's sovereignty. But look at the preparation for judgment of self. When the fire of heaven comes down. Look at this. Revelation 20 verse 9 says, And they went up 
on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Genesis chapter 19, verse 29 or 24. I, I never looked it up. I guess I can look it up right now. But this is what it says about Sodom and Gomorrah. 19, chapter 19, verse 29, yes. It says, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham. No, that one, it's 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. You see, when a fire comes down, we'll, we'll have a preparation of judgment, of self. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17 says this. It's time that judgment must begin at the house of God. If we can, as Christians, as born-again believers, have a judgment of self, we can't say, God, send a fire that I'll start judging myself. 1 Corinthians 11, verse number 31 says, if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Personal judgment is one of the greatest things that we can do to have fire come down. Because God used fire for judgment. Something, now, granted, we're not going to be judged. Jesus took our judgment. Y'all remember it? He took our judgment. God, that's, that's the point. The cross took our judgment for us. But we sure can do this. Start to judge ourselves. Because if I judge myself, it says I won't be judged by anyone else. They won't be able to. I've already judged myself. I'm my worst critic. You're your worst critic. Beat yourself up all the time, right? Don't let it go too far. But have some judgment. There's a preparation for judgment. Fire speaks of judgment of God as well. When we stay on fire, we keep judgment of ourselves consistent in our life. Don't slack off with that. And number six, last one. Revelation 13. Just turn back a page. Revelation 13. Watch this one. <clears throat> You've got to have patience through, through our sorrows. Patience. It brings patience through our sorrows. Re chapter um, 13 and then Job 1.16 a couple times it says Satan uses fire from heaven. And I was reading this, and look at verse 13. It says, he doeth great wonders. Talking about the Antichrist, 13, 13. He doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I thought that awful strange when you're looking at God sending fire from heaven and God doing great things and God uh, uh, sending fire to light people. And I thought, what is this? Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. You see, if we live for very much longer without Jesus coming back, guys, there's going to be sorrows. There's going to be stuff that's going to happen you're not going to, you're not going to like, but the patience is that there's a fire. Now, I know Satan used it, and I know he used it. He used it to separate. He used it, he used it in Job's life to, to take away a lot that he had. But when he took away a lot that he had, Job retained his integrity before God. And it would just give us enough patience. The fire from heaven may just give us enough patience to go through the sorrow. Burn for him. And that's what happens when the fire from heaven comes down. Now, how do you get it? Or how do you keep it? I know this. <clears throat> I get away about every year at church camp. And, man, I, I, not, I just don't wait till then. I try every morning to get right before. I try every evening. I try to to make sure that I'm around preaching a lot. <laughs> you ever want to get on fire, just get around a lot of preaching. Just get a lot around a lot of preaching. You, you say, I've lost a little bit of fire. I've lost who I used to be. I lost some of the, the oil in my lamp. is is, is drained a little, a little bit. My, my wick needs trimmed a little bit, and my, my fire's gone down. What do I do? Go to Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 11. I'm going to show you three things, and I'll be done. All in the book of Luke. How do I get my fire back? Because I know this. I know this, Satan ain't letting up. Satan ain't letting up. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't taking a break. He's still, or he's still got fire to destroy you and me. He's still got fire to, squ to, to squelch the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's still on fire for his cause. I'm just reckoning there's a bunch of Christians ought to get in fire for ours. How do I get there? I got three little things for you and I'll be done. Luke chapter 11, verse number 33. I just want to show you a couple things. I, I couldn't exhaust this message by any means, but you just take some of this, take what the Lord will teach you and go home. Verse number 33 says, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, there it is, what did he light it with? Fire. 
When he lighteth a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. You want to keep, you want to keep your fire, you want to get some fire, burn for others. Burn for others. We say, well, I don't, man, I, I don't know if I quite got this fire thing or not. I don't know if I could quite be like this. Well, realize there's someone else that maybe needs to burn for Jesus. And remember what we said, the, bar, the fire lights things. And the hotter and the more on fire you are for Jesus, the more capability you have to light someone else on fire for Jesus. And you say, well, man, I just don't know if that'll work with me. Well, maybe the person that needs to be lit on fire is standing beside you or they're watching you and they need lit on fire. Just burn for them. You see, this candle was not lit for the person. It doesn't say necessarily. Look at the verse. It says, but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. This was burning for someone else. You want to stay on fire for Jesus? Burn for someone else. Find someone else to burn for. Say it's your kids or your grandkids. Say it's your co-workers at work. Burn for them. Light up for them. Stay on fire for them. Trim your wick. Fill, fill your oil. Pop back up. Get, get another dose of the Holy Spirit of God within you and burn for Jesus or burn for others. Stay on fire. Number two, go to Luke, look, look at verse 36. <clears throat> it says, if thy whole body, therefore be full of light. Where's the light coming from? There's a fire, right? Having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Number two, getting the word of God. Well, how is this about the word of God? Well, this is talking about inward. Y'all hearing me? It's talking about inward. Jeremiah chapter 20. I don't want to quote it wrong. Jeremiah chapter 20. Listen to this. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 says this. Watch what he says. Then I said, this is when Jeremiah's getting discouraged. Jeremiah, he's getting in, down in the dumps. He's preaching the word and nothing's happening. And he's getting discouraged about it. Watch what verse 9 says. Listen to it. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word, watch, his word, his word was in mine heart as a burning fire. <laughs> and watch, he says, shut up in my bones. He said, shut up in my bones. Watch, he says, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. You see, the word of God, it said it just wasn't burning in him. It was burning and it was shut up in his bones. You take a little bit of fire and you put something around it and you shut it, that thing becomes hot really quick. And Jeremiah said, I'm not going to do what God wants me to do. I'm not going to preach this word anymore. And it was such a fire in him. He had such a fire and a zeal for Jesus Christ. He said it was shut up in my bones and it was burning and I couldn't help. Because the word of God caught me on fire I'm telling you, you want to stay on fire for Jesus, get this word in you and keep it in you. Ask yourself, when's the last time you memorized a verse? When's the last time you, you opened it and God spoke to you so richly and purely through it? When you wept over the pages and you thought, oh, Lord God, thank you for speaking to me. When's the last time that happened? You say, I don't know if I've ever had that happen. Get the fire of the word of God back in us. That's what's missing in our churches today. No, uh, when, uh, man, what, I can't think of the statistic. I don't have time to think about it and do it anyway because I got to quit. But, uh, man, uh, the, the, the statistics of those that read their Bibles in, in, our, in, our, uh, in our churches, not in the world. I don't expect the world to read our Bibles. We don't read our Bibles anymore. And we wonder why our fires went out. Burn for others. Get the word of God in you. He said there was something inside him in Luke. It was in there. And it, the whole body was full of light because there was a burning candle in there. And it just wasn't a little thing. It was burning bright. Get the word of God in you. Luke 15. Luke 15. Last one. How can I get this fire? Keep this fire. Now, it's, these are just three simple things. Not the only things, I'm sure. And I could exhaust this more. I just don't got time. Chapter 15, verse 8. Watch this. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not, what? What'd she light that candle with? And what'd she do? And swept the house and seek diligently to find it. Now, if you don't know this parable, what Jesus is trying to say here, he's talking about telling people, witnessing. You find that one lost and you go after him. You want to stay on fire for Jesus? Tell others about him. 
Just tell them. I don't know. I don't. Let's pray. Hand him a track. Girl at Walmart, and I got to quit. I know. I quit. Girl at Walmart, <clears throat> walk by her. Lord said, you need to go talk to her. She's sitting outside. I said, I don't want to. Oh, you all do it too. Don't, I'm just, I'm up here and I got the mic. Okay, so I don't want to do it. Went to Walmart, walked back out. There she is. I go to my car. Y- y'all don't mind me sharing my conversation with God? Do you? Okay. I'm get in my car. And if she's still around, she's still there, when I get in my car and grab a track, then I'll go. But if she's not, it must not be your will. <laughs> Even though he already told me to go. Even though I was already in disobedience. This is my conversation with God. Got a track. She's still there. Take my cart back. Pass by her. Put my cart back. She's still there. I turn around. She's still there. I said, here's some reading material. I didn't, do you know for sure? I didn't go in. I just said, here's some reading material. I'd love for you to do that. Look at that. She said, thank you. Walked back to my car. Said, thank you, Lord. He's like, do it first. Do it the first time next time. I said, thank you, I will. But after I did that, listen, after I did that, there was a fire that rode up in me, and I've done it enough times, and I've failed enough times, and I've said enough times to God, I'll do it if this happens. I'll do it if that happens. I'll do it next time, Lord. And I don't do it, and they go away, and they fly away, and I never see them again. And that fire just squelches in me. But every single time, every single time, Not a full-blown message, not a witness, just a hand of a track or, hey, I'd like to invite you to church or, hey, uh, this, Jesus loves you or something. Every single time that happens in my life and every single time it happened in your life, there'll be a fire well up in you and then God will start to speak to you and things will happen in your life and you'll say, God, I'm hearing you plain and clear now because the fire, the, the oil's full, the wick is trimmed. There's a fire burning in you because you just told someone else about it. Burn for others. Get the word of God in you. And take a candle and light it. And search it for that one lost coin. That'll keep the fire burning in your life. Father, I thank you for your holy and precious word. And God, I thank you for the fire. God, um, maybe it's one out. Maybe it's one out. Maybe we just need a, you to light us back up. Maybe we just send fire from heaven. Light us back on fire again. God, may we be filled with the Holy Spirit of God that the, the wick keeps burning. Tra- help us to trim our lamps. Help us to, God, do the things that are necessary, that there is a light shining in Marysville and Mechanicsburg and North Lewisburg and North Union. There is a light shining for a lost world around us is dying going to hell. Father, we need you. We're going to have an invitation. We're going to sing a song, but I sure hope, God, that if, You've dealt with someone's heart. Maybe we'll find ourselves in an old-fashioned altar tonight, calling out your name, asking us, asking you for fire again. God, would you give us zeal in these last days to do something in our midst that can't be explained by human hands? The music will play. Father, I thank you. Have thine own way, Lord. Whatever God's done in your heart, congregation, whatever he's done, don't ignore it business with God. He wants to do business with us. Would you do business with him? Father, you bless this invitation. If someone here is not saved, they don't know the blood of Jesus Christ. They have no idea of the cross of Calvary and the price that you paid. They've never come to the cross. I'm begging you, Lord, would you get a hold of their heart? If you're in this service, you don't know Jesus for real. You say, what's this fire you talk about? What you've been experiencing tonight? Come down an old-fashioned altar. Grab my hand. Say, well, I need to be saved. We'll show you how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. It's not hard, friend. Father, you bless this invitation as people will come. You do your work in the hearts of men. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you want, turn to...
page number, uh, invitation, 591, have that in your way. Why don't you come?